Um, so we'll, I think a little, uh, little delay and, uh, we should be uh, ready to go. We're ready to go. Okay. I would love for, uh, uh, Laura Nolan to take one of, Look uh, at the computer! Uh, Michael's, uh, magic cards. Uh, so yeah, so we have, uh, well, no, I believe it's uh, Michael Burnett's. I don't believe uh, I believe he has uh, uh, top eight matches. Yes, he does. Yeah. Uh, 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 top eight appearances. I'm sorry. Go, go. Okay. Wait. Okay, uh, Lauren. Uh, obviously, we know we won the uh, Invitational here in Indianapolis. Okay. So uh, Michael Burnett leads with an island. Looks like you got rid of Pack of Negation. He did. Uh, this is a uh, choice with Thoughtseize. That was a very, very effective uh, uh, Thoughtseize by Lauren right away to get out there and uh, get a potential card out there out of his hand that it, that could prevent him from slowing down the engine mm -hmm. when he's trying to go off. Uh, just so you know, those of you at home, uh, we were... Um, Nice enough to have Jeff stop by here in the booth. Uh, the man with the three altered ponders, um, the one with um, Darth Vader, Yoda, Chewbacca, the three Spider-Mans, um, the Batman, and then what looks like here. The, uh, looks like the, uh, hmm? uh, the portals. Yes, the portals. So those of you know we were talking about wanting to see the fourth one. Uh, therefore, uh, you will not see it on camera, but we did that. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, uh, we have Ponder. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Brainstorm uh, by Michael Burnett there. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of, like you said, Michael's deck is just, he has to set up the draw to get the high tide, to get the cards going there. Looks like... He has another land. It looks like he has. Uh, we have Cunning Wish, Force of Will, uh, Candelabra, uh, Flusterstorm, mm -hmm. and two cards I a, can't. A make brainstorm on the bottom. And, yeah, yeah, on the bottom. Card right above brainstorm. Okay. So. Uh, Lauren Orland looks like he has. Uh, looks like he had two Force Wills in his hand. Uh, it looks like he had a. Uh, Spell Pierce also in his hand. Uh, so th these two uh, f uh, fetch lands uh, make it seem like uh, Lauren uh, will uh, be casting an end of turn Vendillion click. Yeah, especially if he knows, like I said, he got to review the list uh, and he wants to definitely be on the aggressive as far as getting rid of cards from Michael's was, hand. Yes. Uh, also, the clock that Vendillion Click provides is very useful. Um, Vendillion Click is probably one of Lauren's stronger cards. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of damage sources uh, in his deck. Uh, a lot of his uh, kills, as, as you see, and come from attacking for two or four at a time, or his big cards are really his uh, two uh, copies of equipment, his Umazawa's Jitae mm -hmm. and his uh, Batter Skull. Yeah, and the quicker we can the quicker he can find a Stone Forge Mystic, the quicker he can uh, potentially put uh, Michael on the clock here. Yeah. Uh, that being said, the Stone Forge Mystic, not the uh, not the fastest clock, the Vendillion Click, a much better clock. Oh, well, yes, absolutely. As well. All okay. right, so it lets him, lets him have it. We have a Brainstorm Time Spiral is the card in uh, yes. Michael's hand. Uh, Merchant Scroll, Buster Storm, Force of Will, Cunning Wish. Uh, what, do you think is his, what do you think his best choice is here? Um... It really, the it, Merchant I mean, Scroll allows him to be able to get one of the pieces of the engine when he wants to. Uh, the, okay, so we want to run down with the, the Merchant Scroll is basically going to be a high tide mm -hmm. uh, in this hand. Uh, the Cunning Wish uh, likely to become a Pact of Negation. Uh, every once in a while it can be a turnabout in this matchup, but uh, it's going to be a Pact of Negation in this matchup. Uh, might actually consider taking uh, the brainstorm. Uh, depends on, also depends on uh, Lauren's uh, 
on his hand if he has the ability to, uh, if he does in fact have a spell pierce, uh, you definitely leave the cunning wish. You yeah. can spell pierce that. Um, you could also... Looks like he has a brain, two, a brainstorm, two force of wills, a spell pierce in his hand. Okay, so... Took the cunning wish. Michael's hand is uh, very good. I might have even tried to... Uh, it's a Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, uh, uh, Michael down to 18. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Fan's uh, not the fastest, but he also has pretty much everything he needs but a couple more lands. Okay, uh, so he is going to go and use Get the Stoneforge Mystic. Yes. Uh, Jite we, uh, or. Uh, batter skull. Batter skull? Not just close, yeah. yeah, just let's go lay out the threats and just start hitting as fast as we can. Fourteen. So three more attacks from Lauren should. Uh, so, uh, but that's that's the uh, Lauren's clock that he's uh, representing. He also has two force of wills uh, and a spell pierce as yeah. backup for that. So. Okay. Uh, an island, excellent draw from uh, Michael. Not only is it, or it's a scalding turn, not only is it, it is a land, but it's a fetch land, so his brainstorm can either further fix his hand, although his hand is pretty well stocked right now. Yeah, let's see what he hits here. He has a candelabra, an island, and a blue sun zenith. So I'd imagine that the, well, the candelabra is not going back. Something else is going back. Blue sun and, uh, I believe, uh, was it a land? I'm not sure. Okay. It, it was not all... It was not one of the lands. Okay, so he's going to shuffle it away. So Blue Sun will go back in to the collection here. He will pull another island out, giving his mana count up to four. Uh, five five lands should be enough for Michael to uh, successfully uh, go off, assuming he can uh, get his uh, cards through, basically. Again, for those of you joining us, thank you. Uh, it's been a wonderful weekend of Magic here. We've got to see uh, Standard with uh, Blue, White, Red Tempo uh, come out to play. Uh, you got to see uh, Reanimator win this weekend. You got to see Jun play. Uh, a lot of great decks now here in Legacy. Wide open field, eight decks in the finals, almost becoming the norm that it's eight different archetypes every week. Uh, Goblins again. Uh, making a hit into the top eight. Unfortunately, he did not win his match, but we did have a great interview with uh, Dr. Arvind Uppel, and uh, don't ask me how to pronounce what he does, I, though he did I pronounce won't. it. He won't, and he did pronounce he, it first. He, yeah, he did it himself. Yes, uh -huh. and he is the ear, nor ear nose, and throat specialist. Um, we managed to work our way to the finals here, which is Esper Stoneblade against High Tide. Lauren Nolan, Michael Bernay, uh, and Michael is on the play here. Michael is deciding if he wants to cast his uh, Merchant Scroll here. Um, spending quite a bit of time to do it. He decides not to. Okay, draw. Has a fairly weak and uh, pointless Swords to Postures. Uh, basically counts as a piece of cardboard in case uh, one can uh, get uh, brainstorm. Okay, untaps. Yeah, so Michael basically knows that he has. Uh, There's a scroll. Yeah. Basically knows that he has two turns to. Uh, he has this setup turn, and he has the next turn. Uh, He has this turn and next turn, basically. Yes. Uh, if Lauren is fortunate enough to draw a Snapcaster Mage or a Thoughtseize or an Inquisition, he is almost a lock to win this game. Even then, now I believe Michael does not have two pieces of protection uh, as it exists. So, I believe uh, Michael should, has a, if he has a Candelabra, I think it's something that he wants to play out. He is uh, going to. And, nope. Nope, just kidding. Sure looks like it. Like I said, getting that out there ahead of time is, is I think, really effective, especially because he wants to have yeah. it out there before he starts. Well, it only costs uh, a single mana. 
but it it is a mana that he uh, it does cost him uh, on his uh, combo turn. So okay. uh, Stoneforge Mystic activates, puts Batter Skull into play. Yes. Okay, this turn is going to be a uh, nice swing for Lauren here. Yeah. Uh, Come and do some serious damage this turn. Uh, basically, over having uh, Michael's total down to six. Mm -hmm. uh, this Stoneforge can swing as well, put Michael to five. Oh, yes, correct. Five. Uh, basically, Lauren has to decide if he, how greedy he wants to get. Uh, he has two Force of Wills, two other blue cards. But one of those blue cards is a brainstorm. Um, I, I really think right now he's in the driver's seat. He only needs two turns. He needs this turn, get through Michael's turn, and come back to him. I think he just swings in with the army, holds back, uh, doesn't cast the brainstorm, and uh, uh, let's uh, get in there and get this done next turn. Make sure in case Michael has two pieces of counter magic, that Lauren can come back and fight it off. Well, Michael needs two pieces. Yes, he does. And Lauren doesn't know that he does not have two pieces, but still. Lauren up to 19, Michael down to five. Next turn, Lauren threaten, uh, threatening lethal to go up one game to nothing uh, with Esper Stoneblade against High Tide. The other thing uh, is that Lauren may not know this, but if he does cast the Brainstorm, he might be able to hard cast one of his Force of Wills if he misses. Uh, because uh, Michael will high tide, mm -hmm. and that'll provide uh, Lauren with the mana. Uh, it looks like he's gonna he's gonna barely uh, get his uh, second blue card back. And it's and it was Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's Jace the Mind Sculptor. So, so. Uh, Lauren should absolutely play his land. Yeah. Uh, okay, there it is. There it is. So, uh, passing to Mike. Okay, well, this is it. Michael has half to go off here. Uh, staring down two Force of Wills. Uh, the, one of the other things that uh, Lauren could have done is not cast his Brainstorm, and then hard, hard cast both Spell Pierce and Force of Will. Mm -hmm. So you have Spell Pierce, Force, Force. Uh, ah. Against the High Tide. Excellent. But I believe he's just going to fight, fight the Tide. Michael has no choice, must go off. Yeah, he knows he has to do it now. It's now or never. He's going to can lock him first? Maybe to try to bait him out? To bait him to play Yeah, the other the thing is uh, one of it, Michael's protection pieces is uh, Flusterstorm. Yes. So, uh, Candelabra adds to the storm count for Flusterstorm. Okay, so. Uh, Lauren's never seen it. Such an expensive card in his life. Okay, uh, there is the high tide. Now we should see Force of Will pitching uh, Jace, pitching Spell Pierce. Mm -hmm. uh, Candle of Tanos, the Antiquities card. Uh, mono artifact means you have to tap it to use it. So basically, with a high tide, you can he can tap his you can. Make his four lands make six mana, or mm -hmm. four, lands, four lands make eight mana, and you can use uh, six of them to untap his lands uh, and basically generate six mana with this candelabra. Okay, there is uh, the Force of Will um, pitching Jace. Uh, Michael needs to come up with something here. Uh, does not know that he's facing down another Force of Will. He does have a Fluster Storm, and I believe he can fight it off actually. Really? Yeah, he has a Fluster Storm, blue card. Time Spiral and Force of Will. But can he find it off enough to get the high tide to go off correctly to be able to get him to where he needs to go to? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, Mike, what uh Storm, four copies, uh, Candelabra, High Tide, uh, Force of Will from Lauren, and his Fluster Storm uh, means that uh, Force of Will, he has to pay four for his Force of Will, 
or it's countered. So since Lauren can't do that, it, Force of Will is going to be countered. So uh, Lauren in the tank here, uh, deciding uh, what he wants to do. I believe he says that the Fluster Storm copy and its copies resolve, the High Tide does not. Um, deciding if he wants to allow it to resolve and hard cast his Force of Will or not allow it to resolve at all. Uh, we should see we should see the force of will uh, pitch the spell first. There it is. There you go. I believe Michael Burnett has it. His last three cards are force of will, blue card, time spiral, and he's gonna we're gonna we're gonna have fun. So basically uh, Lauren threw everything at him to mm -hmm. attempt to stop this. But it does look like uh, Michael is going to manage to skate by this and... He's going to at least resolve a time spiral. Yes. So that's to see his, what happens uh, next. Card. Not sure what Mike's thinking about. He has one play. Let's... Uh, Again, for those of you just joining us, this is the SCG Open Series in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Michael Burnett trying to make High Tide go off here against Lauren Nolan with Esper Stoneblade. This is the finals of the Legacy event. Uh, 204 people joined us here. Uh, he got the lands to, here's the Campbell Opera. It works, it gets done tap, and now... Time spiral floats six mana. All right. Here we go. Nope, that doesn't work. Don't. Lauren does not get to untap his Tundra. No. That was tapped. Uh, look, tracking a storm count just in case. Uh, again, for those of you joining us, um, Michael Lenny is attempting to get the high tide to work. He's got the first part of it going with the fact that uh, the untap of the lands oh what? okay yeah the judge reset the fact that he's supposed to have uh, that land tapped uh, both guys are going to shuffle up and draw seven cards mm -hmm. uh, but in the meanwhile uh, we actually had uh, a question regarding that uh, uh, gentleman asks, uh, do they keep track of the storm count for these guys? I never see anyone with a dice, and once you time spiral, the, the storm count can go on. Yeah, the um, problem is, uh, it's the, the uh, table judge is not, it's not his responsibility to keep track of the game for the players. It's always the player's responsibility to keep track of anything they want to keep track of. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if neither player uh, kept track of Storm and then they cast a Storm card. Uh, imagine this happening in a normal match. Uh, uh, Michael Burnett deciding if he wants to pay life. Uh, gonna make a decision about it. He's going to two. He's gonna probe him. Yep, uh, sees Force of Will Jace, five blanks. So he knows he, he knows he has to work on Drew. Oh, he's uh, going for four mana. He paid the mana for the okay. attachment probe. Right. He does have six mana floating. All right. So at minimum, we're going off again. Uh, I see a time spiral in Michael's hand and a multiple force of rules. Uh, what we might get is a turnabout. Uh, via Cunning Wish first. Yes. The um, thing is, uh, Michael may not want a Cunning Wish in his... Uh, yep, he's going to cast Cunning Wish. So he may want the Cunning Wish in his deck for a future time spot because he's not going to be able to go off uh, right now. Or he's not going to be able... To, 
He's going to have to time spiral again. So he's going to shuffle whatever he wishes for into his deck. And not the wish into his deck. So turn about. And they come. Alright. So he can either get a turn he can go in for a turnabout. His options are a turnabout, um, brain freeze, which is not lethal, uh, pact negation, and or blue sun zenith. He's going with a turnabout, uh, so he can generate some extra mana uh, prior to uh, hiding again. I'm going to meditate. Uh, he's going to cast. So meditate for Michael. Alright. Then we'll get him. He's going to look along to look at the card. Yep. Uh, Michael's going to skip his next turn. Uh, not happening. And uh, draw four cards. Well, he definitely needs the action here. Okay. Force of Will. Throwing away Jace, met with a, another Force of Will. So he will draw the four cards. Let's see if he can't uh, go off without casting the Time Spiral. Because he knows that uh, Lauren, Lauren's hand is currently uh, empty of uh, relevant cards. So, uh, Brainstorm. Brainstorm. I'd be it's unlikely that uh, Michael can go off without casting another time spiral, but it's I've seen I've seen crazier things. Uh, High tide. High tide. So tide is at three. All of Michael Burnett's islands make three mana. Yeah, he's writing that down right now. So yeah. that is known, and like you said, that is the responsibility of a player. Uh, when my friend uh, Nathan played the deck, he actually had this, uh, these like almost life pads. Like he basically had a notebook with all the different things that he might keep track of, and he had one sheet for each game he played, or each one each game that he went off. Okay, so he's made gonna, it very easy. <laughs> he's gonna do it once. He's going to do it twice. Um, the amount of mana that can be made and the amount of turnabouting that happens, uh, yes, fairly absurd. So. You could say, safely say that Michael's uh, mana pool uh, double digits of blue mana. At some point we might get triple digits. Yeah. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, Lauren okay, just yeah, says, thank yeah. You. Thanks, Lauren. Yes. What, a, what a pal. Scoops to that. <laughs> Moves on the game, too. Uh, figures it's in his best interest. He knows he's going off right now, and there's really nothing he can do. Showing yep. that he is over 10 mana, basically, per, per every island that he taps. Uh, he was going to... He's going to mull out Lauren either way. It was coming there. All right, so Lauren just said he will take out the Swords of the Plowshares because they're absolutely useless to him. Mm -hmm. um, the Engineer Explosives. Oh, wait. You're not going to believe it. We have a trivia question. Oh, trivia time. My goodness gracious. Our final question of the evening for one year one a full year of scg premium yeah i uh, hope jeff abong wins this one's going to be a little tougher this one's going to require you to have a little knowledge of the scg black team okay uh, it is available on starcitygames.com you can look and see the entire roster of the scg black team okay there is one person on that team that missed going into the hall of fame by one vote. Oh, somebody missed by one vote? Yes. Rats. And That'd be really unfortunate. Yes. I'd hate if that was me. Yes. I'd uh, actually love if that was me. I'd be. <laughs> I'd love to get a Hall of Fame vote. Yes. That I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this gentleman uh, has, uh, at the time, um, when John Finkel was leaving for the first time, uh, anointed him the next great player. Mm-hmm. And for when he was playing full time, his record was outstanding. And the fact is that as limited goes, mm -hmm. he all time has one of the best win percentages 
ever in limited formats. If you know who we're talking about, this member of the SCG Black team that missed the Hall of Fame by one vote, tweet the hashtag SCG Premium right there. And you too can win one full year of SCG Premium. Yeah. Be able to go through all. One year, that's a lot. Yes, it is. Um, and congratulations to you if you get that question correct. Uh, for yeah. those for those of you that uh, follow my podcast, the the Meta Magic podcast, available on NTG Cast, and sometimes when I get some Starts of the Games people put up on there mm -hmm. by Lauren Lee on Starts of the Games dot com, uh, I've had a very long interview with him, um, and I will make no secret about that I am championing his cause to make the Hall of Fame. I believe that uh, when you put together a tremendous series of years, that it should be able to get you into the Hall of Fame. No, he does not have the 15 years of play like uh, Apollo did to get in the Hall of Fame or like Patrick Chapin has to get in the Hall of Fame, but uh, to be as effective as he was. Uh, this is clearly a man who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, made day two of the Pro Tour this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely someone that, uh, when it comes to magic, really knows his stuff. Okay, getting back to the match. Uh, we have sideboards up here. Yeah, so uh, one Thoughtseize, yes, two right. Surgicals, two Cabal Therapies uh, coming in for sure. Yes. And Lingering Souls will probably come in if uh, Lauren has things to, uh, to cut. He has two Engineered Explosives, four Swords of Plow Shares. Um, looks like uh, that's about it. So that's, that's basically what uh, Lauren is cutting. Uh, I'll probably bring in one copy of his... Uh, his uh, Lingering Souls, mm -hmm. uh, just to make the numbers match up. Because uh, Engineered Explosives and Swords of Plowshares do nothing. He has five discard cards to bring in, so Lingering Souls is the last card that does uh, basically anything. All right, let's look at the, the High Tide board. Uh, I don't know how much he's really going to want to bring in here because uh, the High Tide deck really runs best on its main engine. And unless you think there's something here that he should be bringing in off the sideboard that he can't get, I mean, he can, he can get to the cards on his sideboard at any time. Mm -hmm. So be a cunning wish. So uh, basically, uh, Michael's sideboard is a wish sideboard. He wants, he wants access to uh, be able to wish for any of these cards at any given time. So he will likely just not sideboard. All right, again, for those of you who just joined us, this is the finals of Legacy. Uh, Michael Burnett playing high tide up one game to nothing over Lauren Nolan playing Esper Stone Blade. Uh, Mike, Michael Burnett had the mechanic uh, last game of his high tide going off. Uh, Lauren wisely scooped in the situation, realizing that he was not going to get his way out of it. I believe the land island count was somewhere near 10 per island. I uh, believe. Or yeah, it, it was, was at it was least three for Island. Oh, was it three? Yeah, he only has two high tides. Oh, but he did end up um, untapping his lands, making yeah. adding lots of blue mana to his yeah. mana. Pool. So he was floating an absolute ton of mana. And he uh, ended up playing a blue sun zenith for uh, double digits. Yes. Uh, before he could count out all the cards, <laughs> Lauren conceded. Yeah. All right. So Lauren is offering here Michael. Uh, Looking potentially at sideboarding some cards here. Uh, so it's a more really uh, looking at uh, what Lauren has to offer. He's looking oh, yeah. at Lauren's the deck, list. deck list. Yeah, and I'm sure he's seeing the fact that uh, thought seizes and other cards like that that'll attack his hand directly uh, will be coming into play. All right, there's Lauren. Looks like uh, he's already mulliganed to six. Yeah, both and these guys. Michael's keeping. Yeah, both these guys. You can see, you can see the uh, exhaustion coming onto their faces. Uh, uh, they brought it upon themselves. <laughs> uh, Lauren leads with an island, and Michael leads with a polluted delta. Yes, polluted delta, the uh, land of choice this weekend. It almost seems like uh, we've seen mm. an awful lot of polluted delta this weekend. Yeah. All right.
Um, all right, so we have uh, Lauren Nolan attempting potentially here to uh, maybe you know, he will get out the Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, probably going to get Batter Skull right away. Again, last turn it was uh, the Jite will not do as much for him as the Batter Skull will. Uh, it looks like he's going to do it and uh, swing, not take anything from it. Uh, he must have either the Batter Skull or uh, the Jute in his hand. Uh, uh, he does have the Batter Skull already. He, in his he hand. does have the Batter Skull in his hand, and uh, he uh, definitely uh, probably cited out his uh, Umizawa's Jute. Uh, we go to uh, Michael's turn. It looks like he's uh, fetching an island, and uh, shuffling up for. Uh, it looks like. Uh, if you're just following us, we are in the uh, finals of our uh, Legacy Open here in Indianapolis. Uh, we've been here all weekend, and we've had a uh, great set of tournaments. Now we're uh, down to one final match. Um, uh, Michael Brunat plays a Ponder, not altered Ponder, like we saw in our last match. Yes. But. Uh, Nonetheless, uh, Michael, looks like he's going to keep his top cards. Uh, not good to see what they are, but one of them was an island for sure. Okay. Uh, it does look like he has the Candelabra in his hand also. And multiples, in fact. Uh, looks like, uh, let me see uh, cards that uh, Michael has in hand. Two Candelabra Brainstorm, High Tide uh, is what I can see for sure. Maybe a Meditate as well. And so, uh, Lauren not happy about having drawn his batter skull the uh, turn before he wants to put it into play. But uh, he definitely has time to uh, just pass, put the batter skull into play, start uh, clocking Michael Burnett uh, for five a turn. Um, uh, Michael is just uh, continuing to develop his uh, mana base, plays out a Candelabra. Um, Michael smartly uh, waited on his Candelabra last game, make sure his Fluster Storm had enough Storm to be a hard counter. Uh, but this game, no Fluster Storm, no need to uh, save a mana for him. So, <clears throat> on Lauren's turn, uh, Lauren's turn, Brainstorm uh, starts his turn. Hopefully, uh, I see Lauren definitely has a uh, Cabal Therapy in his hand. However, he does not know what is in his hand. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, he does, doesn't know uh, Michael's hand. Uh, just found his uh, source of black mana. So, uh, brainstorm, excellent brainstorming for Lauren. Pluto Delta. Mm hmm. Uh, that'll find a black mana source in the form of Underground Sea. Is this uh, the point where Lauren goes high tide or Emergent Scroll and just try to see if he can hit it? Um, perhaps it depends on what he feels. I feel like uh, Lauren will want to cast the uh, Jace hmm? the next turn. But uh, Cabal Therapy is going to be responded to with a brainstorm, and Lauren does not seem happy no, about his prospects no. of uh, hitting on this Cabal Therapy. No, he's, now, uh, now he's got to pretty much shoot in the dark. Uh, yeah, he, they, you get to play these nice mind games. Yeah, uh, I actually love them uh, back in old Extended. Yes. Uh, Cabal Therapy was a dominant card in Extended. Uh, you saw it in like maybe four or five different decks. Oh, yeah. I did a brainstorm. Uh, just right when the Onslaught Fetches came out, you mm -hmm. see all sorts of brainstorm. Well, therapy, like the, the interaction between the two cards is fantastic. A uh, lot of, lot of uh, different levels of magic uh, being played. So, because Michael Burnett gets a high to his two best cards, uh, Lauren Nolan, the f newly anointed Cabal Therapy <laughs> Sniper. Yeah, the master, uh, of the, the master of the Cabal Therapy. <laughs> so, Meditate, Candelabra number two, uh, Turnabout. Uh, basic Island of his 800th different set. And Brainstorm. Uh, brainstorm. 
Uh, I wonder if uh, Michael Burnett chose his uh, islands specifically to tilt his opponents. They are of the widest variety of sets uh, possible. Oh, you know, hey, you could have... That's that's a beta island. That's, there's probably one of them in, uh, <laughs> you, in Michael's deck. You could have 12 beta islands. You could. Or, or I, you could the, have... What I would choose. Okay, or you could have one of as many different uh, things as you can get to be different. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's all everything wrong with that. Uh, it, would, it would tilt me if I had to play Michael's deck. It would make me so happy if I was playing against Michael. Because I know my opponent is so scattered and disorganized that I have a huge mental edge by all my basic lands looking the same. Okay. Um, but Michael Brett believes that variety is the spice of life. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't tell you how many lands I have, and I don't think I have a full set of everything together. I just don't. I, hmm? All right, uh, he has four mana right now. Uh, options are open for what he can do here. It looks like he wants to just pass, because five seems to be the magic number. Uh, I believe we have an attack. Uh, Michael Burnett should be at 14, uh, and then this attack for five from uh, Lauren will bring him down to nine. Um, it would be really valuable for Lauren to be able to sacrifice his Stoneforge Mystic to Cabal Therapy, but he doesn't want to shorten his clock. So he can't do it this turn or next turn. He can do it next turn. Yes. Because uh, an attack next turn will bring Michael to uh, four. And conveniently, Batter Skull gives the zero zero germ plus four, plus four. Okay, uh, that would be another uh, polluted delta, and nope, he's going to uh, do this turn. Uh, also, Mike still has a, a brainstorm in his hand. Yes, he does. So we get to play this game again. Oh, here we go. It's really fun. Uh, maybe no, maybe he'll let him do. Oh no, nah, he's gonna there's, do it. there's no way that. Uh, yeah. So what there do you think go. Lauren's gonna guess? I haven't a clue, but he hit on the last time. I I don't know what Lauren's gonna name, but it's gonna be in Michael's hand. Okay, it looks like he drew. So he that cunning wish is safe in his hand. So yes. is the uh, merchant scroll. The high, tide, high tide, tide is still not safe. I think the high tide has to go exactly on top of the deck. Um, if only because uh, that's the card Lauren would name. Yes. Uh, if that's the card Lauren is most scared of, uh, but and it's very realistic that. Uh, one would actually name it. However, there's this like next level. It's like, oh wait, you know, I I'm supposed to hide, you know, hide my high tide. Yes. So Lauren's not going to name it. So I don't have to hide my high tide. But also, he didn't see it last time. Right. So uh, if Lauren's going Lauren's, strictly off the list, Lauren is unlikely to name something on the list. Okay. I think uh, none of the cards on the list are that imposing. Most of them are like Candelabra, uh, Turnabout. Uh, not cards, not disruptive cards, mm -hmm. not, they're, they're just cards that make mana but aren't high tide. Exactly. All right, well, we'll see what happens here. Let's see what the uh, Lauren goes with here. Either way, uh, he might go with Meditate. Uh, meditate would be the only one that I could see Lauren Nolan naming Looks that, like, was, that Mike had last time. Looks like he is deep in meditation on that one. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what it's he a, comes It's up a with tough, him. tough pick. He names the turnabout. Uh, I don't think that's the uh, strongest thing. I, would, I might have named the Time Spiral if that was on the list. Uh, looks like Michael did hide the Meditate. Uh, so there's a Merchant Scroll for uh, Burnett. Uh, that can get a second copy of High Tide or a Pact of Negation. Yes, uh, and we already know that he has High Tide stacked there at the top of his deck. However, uh, if Lauren sees this play, this is excellent. Um, Lauren can play his Jace, uh, Fate Seal, and get an excellent card off of Michael's deck, a card that Michael wanted to save. All right, well, let's see if he does that. Yeah. Uh, or will Lauren, in his um, excitement of getting Jace down, brainstorm to try to see if he can maybe help out his hand to potentially slow it down? Well, we'll see what happens right now. And I believe uh, Lauren still has... Unlikely to improve his hand to two Force of Will status. Okay. He's at f one Force of Will status okay. right now. So uh, currently, 
Uh, the only thing he can improve to on this turn will be, uh, he can't even improve to that because he's no. going to be left with two cards in hand. It's going to be Force of Will and uh, one other card. Um. He does not. He goes for Cunning Wish. Oh, he has Vendillion Click. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, that's something. Uh, Michael, s oh wow. Michael made a slight sideboard change. Seeing that uh, uh, Lauren had Surgical Extraction, yeah. he sided out one of his High Tides. Hmm. That way he can still Cunning Wish for it once uh, if uh, Lauren is able to Surgical Extract his High Tides. Excellent, not leaving himself in position where he could be completely out. Yeah, and uh, even then, like, uh, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if uh, Michael actually has a, uh, has a, uh, what you call, a Pact of Negation in his sideboard, because that would be the card that he would want to get. So you'd have two Pact, pact of Negations main deck instead mm -hmm. of one in the main and one in the sideboard. Right. That might have been the swap he made. Um... Let's see. What do is if if he uh if he did uh wish for this is interesting. There's a lot of uh variety. There's a repeal. Uh that's actually uh fairly impressive. That's gonna buy that would buy, you know, Michael a ton of time if not if not for the Vendillion click in Lauren's hand. Uh, so Michael Burnett gets the uh, gets the repeal, but Lauren is like, "Hold on, I'm not sure if I want you to untap." He can counter it here. He does have force of will. Nope, he's gonna let it go. Now the repeal is now in Michael's hand, uh, and Michael's going to untap. Maybe. Well. We're 41 minutes into this match of the SCG Open Legacy Finals. Robin and Martin joined in the booth by Anna Prozac. Uh, Laura Nolan down a game, uh, basically almost in the same situation he was last time. Uh, up up on the board with life, but... Uh, um, yeah, he's got to close his hand very quickly. Um, so we have Merchant Scroll, the Time Spiral, one. Candelabra, and the Repeal in uh, Michael's hand. Uh, I might actually consider, he, he knows that um, Meditate is in Michael's top two cards. Uh-huh. So, uh, he, he doesn't know what the other one of the two cards is. Uh, Merchant Scroll might be the, might be the pick. Uh, if you Merchant Scroll, you can, right, right now your uh, Lawrence Forcible is going to counter something. So, uh, One on really, really deep in thought about what he wants to uh, take with it. Uh, he's going to take the repeal, put Michael on the quickest clock possible. Uh, not a huge fan of that, but I might have taken the Merchant Scroll. And that can be both a protection spell and a second high tide, if uh, whatever Michael wants it to be. Uh, Merchant Scroll would have been my play. Uh, so Michael draws his High Tide and his Meditate, the two cards he hid from the Brainstorm. Yes. On uh, Lauren's Cabal Therapy. So can he start the chain here to win? Be interesting. So yeah, Michael has two High Tides. Uh, basically, he has High Tide Merchant Scroll. Yes. Uh, both those do the same thing. So. Okay, high counter to side tide. Uh, uh, if I were Lauren, I would actually counter this. He has to stop the the engine from going, and the mm -hmm. high tide is the engine to get high tide the deck going. Yeah, uh, Lauren's actually in a super tough spot. He's uh, got Michael on a two turn clock. But without a draw, one force of will is not going to be enough uh, for uh, Lauren. To be able to get in to get to the finish off Michael here for the game. Mm -hmm. So does he risk 
letting this he's, go on. He's letting it go. Okay. So he that might be a fatal move, I believe. I believe neither player is doing anything, so Oh no yeah. No idea what's going on. Looks like uh, Lauren's in the tank. Because he's look at him. That is Ooh, definitely a man is deep in thought and meditating. He's medita He's not meditating. <laughs> Michael Burnett would be the one meditating. Yes. All right, so... Looks like it resolves. Let me see... Merchant, no. Candelabra float one. All right. Results. Is there going to be a point where uh, Warren is going to be is going to try to play the force of will regardless? Uh, Maybe a four. Yeah, I believe so. I yeah. believe there will be a point. But uh, I mean, it, I mean, if you're Michael, you re you've got to realize by now. He clearly has the force will in his hand. Correct. Uh, by the way, he's been thinking about it. Okay. Uh, Use the untap. Goes from there. Merchant. Okay. Merchant Skull again. Uh, this could could he be searching for a high tide? No, he's going no. for a pact negation. negation. So he's going uh, going to move in on his uh, time spiral with four lands. I can't imagine Michael wanting to uh, play Meditate first, even though that's one of his uh, cards. I think he's just going to uh, be content to uh, play his Time Spiral and untap with four lands. Tide makes two islands make two mana and a Candelabra, potentially adding uh, to Michael's impressive mana pool. Uh, so Michael Burnett's going to float one, maybe. It's definitely a case of uh, being mm -hmm. having to play this correctly. Yeah, so he's actually going to add some mana to his mana pool. It's going to be quite difficult for us to track it for you, but uh, we'll do our best. All right. All right, so one... Yeah, um... So, for a believe, uh, eight plus four plus one, I believe he has two mana currently floating. Uh, meditate resolves. Seems um, a little flustered there. Yeah, like uh, something I, think the, I think the judge is telling him to speed up and he's just very adamant that he does not have to. No. Well, the judge is very much within the rights of the tournament to tell uh, Michael to pick up the pace of the play. Uh, brainstorm from Michael, uh, one mana floating. And time Spiral, Merchant Scroll, Getaxian Probe. Wow, that's a nice draw. Yeah. I mean, he may even with the, okay, he's not going to, I say, he may have even with the floating mana just throw the Getaxian Probe just to verify that he has the yeah. The force of will on there, but it looks like he's not going to do that. He's just going to keep going. Merchant scroll? Uh, merchant scroll, uh. Merchant scroll it is. High tide? Just off screen, you see uh, Michael uh, shuffling and his, uh. his cult attire. Yes, uh. Andrew Luck, number one pick in the NFL draft this year. Uh, Colts had a game today Again. against the Cleveland Browns. And just, uh, just down the street, the uh, Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah, and this uh, is right down the street from the Indianapolis Convention Center. Indianapolis ended up winning that game by the slimmest of margins. Okay, so there's the high tide. So Michael sees the news. He'll crack that land. Get another island out there. And shuffle effects again by Michael. Taking him down to six. Mm -hmm. 
And here we go. Time Spiral Pact. Alright, so Michael is going to both skip his next turn and lose on his next turn. So, uh, if I were Michael Burnett, I would recommend winning right now. Yeah. This turn. Uh, however, I like Michael's chances of doing that. So he's going to untap five lands, and both players are going to shuffle them up. I'll make sure that Time Spiral is exiled. I think it is. It's off camera. Uh, by Jace's and Lauren's exile pod that was re removed to the Force of Will. Yes. All right. Uh, for those of you joining us, we are 15 minutes into uh, um, game two of the finals of the SCG Open in Indianapolis, Indiana. Laura Nolan playing Esper Stoneblade, uh, currently with the click and Batter Skull on the field. Uh, right now, you are in the midst of um, Michael Burnett attempting to uh, get the high tag combo to go off. Uh, lands, I believe, are at a count somewhere between. I believe uh, they make four. Four each right now. And so, um, meditate, turn about. Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Pact. Uh, seven blue cards should probably do it for oh Michael. We'll see how Almost regardless of what they are. Okay, yeah, Michael, clearly this is it. Michael is throwing it all out there on the line. Uh, three more blue cards. Oh, hand, actually. Ponder. Yep. So, uh, let's, let's do this. Michael. Ponder, which will allow him to float three mana, I believe, if you're not correct, on your numbers. Ponder, uh, something else I can't see. Uh, Preordain, I believe. Looks three like blue he, cards. Looks like he will potentially shuffle this up. Nope, he'll take it. Looks like uh, Lauren has one Force of Will, zero blue cards. Zero other blue cards. Okay. Uh, brainstorm. Why not? So if Tide gets to five each, so if Michael plays another high Tide, Lauren can hard cast his Force of Will. I don't think we'll get to that point. I, I feel like Michael's going to win fairly soon here. Well, let's see if he can get it. Uh, he has to make sure that... He doesn't screw up, and also with the fact that the uh, judge is, the judge is uh, leaning on him a little bit, uh, he did get a little flustered there. Another merchant scroll. So we're gonna get a, another high tide. Apparently, we need more, more high tide. Well, basically, he's absolutely making sure that, uh, regardless of the situation, he gets enough mana produced down on the board to win. Uh, I have not seen yet is the blue sun zenith. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would imagine that it's around. Currently not in his hand of at least 10 cards right now. Okay, so, so taps make, three. Then make some mana taps. I think it's tap like 15. Uh, 15 going to turn about, untap his artifacts. Uh, that untaps both candelabras. The candelabras both go to work. Uh, and floating a large amount of mana. Let's just say Michael has mana in the 30s to 50s right now. I still, again, I still do not see. I see a Cunning Wish. Okay, so we'll Cunning Wish for it. Oh, oh he's got a Preordain now. Lauren thinking if he should do something here. Because at this rate, Lauren is going to end up losing period straight out. Get to show your hand. Okay, there's the taxi probe. Show him your hand, Lauren. That's bad. Land, land, thought sees three lands. Oh, there's a surgical extraction. Okay, 
Yeah, course it will. Course it will for it. That should uh, solve that problem. Ponder. Looks like a blue sun zenith. Finally. So, light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe. Oh yeah, there's a forcible and a pack navigation in Michael's hand, so he has cover for anything he wants. Um, let's shoot. So he's going to draw the brainstorm, cast the brainstorm, uh, draw the candelabra and the blue sun zenith. And put two random cards back. Put Force of Will back. Kay. So his hand is uh, all the cards one could ever want. Yeah, he could play Candle Hopper here just to. Alright, Mike. There it is. I wonder if it gets to the point where Lauren asks, can, we, can I have a count of where we're at exactly? Just curious if you would do that or not. Okay, so we're going to get even more mana. Use the Candle Opera, untap. Get even more mana. Use the Candle Opera, untap. Um, setting up Blue Sun Zenith for the win. Turn about my artifacts. Oh, turn about my artifacts. So yeah, Blue Sun for the uh, win is going to happen in uh, five minutes or less. Okay. Uh, about two, three game actions. So yeah. Well, I'm not willing to admit defeat yet, apparently. Well, he's, sure holding, he's sure holding those cards. Like he's uh, ready to throw it in. Okay, showing the turnabout, explaining what's going to happen. Explaining. I think there's a, there might be, you know, can't, uh, the players can decide and if there's uh, 51 blue mana floating or 54 blue mana floating. Or something along those lines. Well, if he chooses to have him do it a couple more times, I mean, he realistically could and get it up to three. Oh, yeah. He could get it up to 300 mana if he'd like, and then play uh, likely. Green Sun Zenith and say, here you go. Or Blue Sun Zenith and here you go. Uh, okay, Candelabra. Uh, Candelabra, not, no, uh, no shortcuts. Here comes the lethal blue sun zenith. Yes. Uh, pack negation, and, and there that, it is. That's the match. Wow! Congratulations to, to Michael Bernay, <laughs> winning with high tide under 60 minutes. I'm so proud of him. Uh, yes. Uh, it's been a 